<clears throat> we started this process, but I, I need to use it again. <clears throat> so let, let me read uh, from verse 15 to 17. <clears throat> Notice what it says. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as that a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. <clears throat> Father, I pray that you will allow us again to learn how to live our abundant life that you have given us. Yes. And I pray that you will bless this message for us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Many of the workmen of God are not approved because they are not studying. You see, an approved workman is one that is living an abundant life of studying continuously. You know, Apostle Paul calls himself a servant of Jesus Christ and the laborer of God that continued to study. <clears throat> God reveals to him many mysteries that he has to learn, you see. <clears throat> now, our Lord calls <clears throat> his disciples as laborers when he said in Matthew 9.37, the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. <clears throat> and he calls them also as a workman when he sent them two by two in Matthew 10.10, 10, when he said, the workman is worthy of his meat. <clears throat> now in our text, God calls his servants in 2 Timothy 2.15, as workmen. The question is, are you workmen of God? Are you a workman of God? <clears throat> are you a servant of Jesus Christ? It's, if your answer is yes, amen for that. And I hope every one of you is a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, did he call you to serve him? Did he save you and let you stay in this world so he can use you as his laborer to harvest his field? Amen. The answer, brethren, I hope is still yes. Now, if your answer is no, then you are not part of his kingdom. You are not his servant, you see. But every member of his kingdom is a servant. It does not matter if you are a woman, a teenager, poor, rich, educated, uneducated, for we are all servants of the king of kings. Yes. Now, abundant life means for an approved workman is having many resources, supplies, and Reserves of information, knowledge, and wisdom to serve his king effectively. Now, how do we accumulate our resources, our supplies, our reserves of information, our knowledge and wisdom as workmen of God? The answer, my brethren, is through the study of the word of God. Do you know how companies hire their laborers? They hire them according to their knowledge, skills, 
and wisdom on a particular job that they are applying for. For example, if they want to hire you as a pilot, they want to know if you know how to fly an airplane, is that right? So if you are being interviewed as a pilot and say, I think I know how to fly an airplane because I have been practicing how to fly kites besides mm -hmm. the bits for many years. The interviewer, interviewer will say, I see, that is interesting. We will call you when we are hiring people how to fly kites. Brethren, it's funny, but is this not true to the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ? Many of his servants have little knowledge of how to use the word of God in their service to the Lord. Why? Because they are not studying as workmen. So brethren, this morning, I want to encourage you to start your study this year that the Lord Jesus will approve you as his workman to live the abundant life. Now, how should we study the word of God? We study it and through it. So let me give you some outlines this morning. <clears throat> the first one is this, study enthusiastically to explore truths through his word. Study enthusiastically to explore truths through his word. <clears throat> One thing I, I want to thank the Lord for is that he gives me excitement in learning and studying things I do not know. You know, I love to study how to be a mechanic, how to be a plumber, how to be a roofer, how to be an electrician, how to be a good husband and a good father, etc. On my first year in the Navy, there was an English class on board the USS Midway. <clears throat> and I enrolled in it. When we are tested and given our grades, the instructor, instructor said to me, Rick Castro, you are 10 years behind in your English grammar. That means I have to go back to the fifth grade. You see, I joined the, the Navy when I was second year in college in engineering. Well, after that interview, I began to study English grammar on my own and memorized vocabularies. When we were in San Diego at Midway Baptist Church, they have an English class. Sister Olive and I enrolled in it. And I think Pastor Larry Obero. So three of us enrolled in this class. <clears throat> Our English teacher told me that I am an English grammar guru in writing. And I, I even corrected our teacher. You see, brethren, because I study, but I am not boasting, brethren, but encouraging you to study enthusiastically. See, my point, my brethren, is that if you will serve our king, you need to have enthusiasm and excitement in studying and exploring the truth and include grammar in your study. Well, because we are not born in this United States, our grammar is not that good, right? So we need to study so that we can teach the word of God in English in a little bit proper grammar, you see. <clears throat> you see, I also have been studying how sinners get saved and knowing those that are saved and those that are not, you see. Since our profession is to be instruments of the spirit in his saving souls, we need to know the, the real saved and the unreal. That we may help new ones to become genuinely saved. If they did not become truly saved, they will leave the church. That's why we need to study. 
Brethren, we need to study the truth in his word with enthusiasm. Do you know that truths are our tools? These are our equipment. Truths are our instruments. Do you remember that we discovered a particular truth? Our Lord taught us that mountains are descriptions of doubts in our prayers that block our prayers, which can be removed when we truly believe without wavering, but expecting answer. Do you also remember that should we discover that the just shall live by faith, that we should live by faith every minute, every hour, every day. We need the truth from the word of God for they are the ones that we can use in our lives and for others to benefit them, you see. And I hope we've learned that already uh, that message that we need to live by faith every minute, every hour and every day. Now, as an auto mechanic at home, I need many, not few tools to fix our cars. If I don't have the tool to fix a certain problem, I have to order it first. And then my work will be suspended. That is why I love tools, you see. Similarly, the truths of in the word of God we learn are our tools in serving our king. You know, I love the truth I learned from the word of God. <clears throat> Another truth that we have encountered is like the word of uh, the word of God is called the word of reconciliation. Another, it is called the sword of spirit. Another is sharper than any two-edged sword, you see. <clears throat> And then also truth purifies the soul when it is obeyed according to 1 Peter 1.22. And it converts the soul according to Psalms 19.7. Therefore, we need to study truth, you see, enthusiastically through the word of God. <clears throat> so as we discover the truth, we need to learn how to use them. And we learn by practicing and using them for the benefits of others and, uh, and keep using them, you see. Benefits of ourselves and others, you see. The sad thing, brethren, is that many servants of the Lord are lazy in studying his word. I mean, we are lazy when it comes to studying truth through his eternal word. Can I ask you a question? How many of you are not lazy in studying the truth through his word? Do you take notes when the spirit impresses you with some truth? You see, students use notebooks. Is that right? I only know one student that did not use a notebook. Uh, it was my classmate in engineering. <clears throat> We're taking engineering class and it should take us four years. But my classmate took him 10 years. He almost have a doctorate degree, but only got bachelor. And uh, he almost failed also. <laughs> so brethren, uh, I want you to notice in our text in verse 16, all right? Notice what it says, right? But shun profane and vain babblings. It says, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. <clears throat> Do you know what that means, brethren? That passage, right? Uh, what is the truth in this verse? It means we need to shun or avoid vain babblings. Right? In other words, we need to avoid listening to the people in this world who are babbling vainly that does not edify our godliness. For example, when you listen to an announcer of an NBA basketball competition and say to the media that LeBron James was the best NBA player in the league, is babbling in vain in your face. Why is that? It is because the information is, he is spewing 
in your face does not increase your knowledge and wisdom in serving your master. Does it? No, it doesn't. Now, when you keep watching different sports entertainment competitions and listen when they announce we were the best player and their idols of athletic competitions, their vain and worldly babblings will eat your godliness like a canker. I mean, notice verse 17. Paul says, and their word will eat as that a canker. Do you know that a canker virus eats our flesh and turns it into a white spot? You know, a mild canker so in the mouth it's the flesh and turns it into white. I have been suffering, suffering from a canker sore throughout my life. And I recently discovered that when my body received a potent foreign substance like health supplements or antibiotics or other strong medicine, a canker sore is created and start eating my flesh. Thankfully, it only lasts for two or three weeks. And I have them every month. <laughs> but since my discoveries lately, I seldom have them now. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Similarly, the vain babblings we hear from the entertainment world turn into powerful spiritual cankers and eat our godliness and make us worldly and carnal. Therefore, whatever entertainment you watch on TV or YouTube and you listen to their vain babblings, like movie dramas, funny videos, sports videos, etc., your godliness is being eaten up. And soon you have believed like the unsaved. You behave like the unsaved and go back to your old life fulfilling the desires of your flesh. Besides, what are you accumulating in your life as servants of the King of Kings when you hear the information you watch from the entertainment world? They are vain words of the ungodly, isn't it? And God says that they are eating your godliness. Soon there will be no godliness left in you. Now, why do Christians What's worldly entertainment of videos, movies, sports, or politics? It is because it is an easy and comfortable life to live with. It is called amusement. Do you know what the word amusement means? You know, the letter A means nothing or none. And the word muse means to think. So amusing means not thinking. When you are being amused, you are not thinking. When we amuse ourselves, we stop thinking. This is one of the most powerful deceptions of the devil. I want you to notice, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. See what I, what I mean? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says over here, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded, right? Had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, let me answer this question, brethren. What is blinding the, the mind means? Is it not putting it to sleep? Right? When you blind the mind, you're putting it to sleep. You tell me, when the mind of a man is asleep, his mind is not being used. It is blinded or covered. That is what Satan does to the people of this world. He puts their mind to sleep by covering them with worldly amusements so that they will not be thinking about their eternal future or eternal destiny. Do you know 
that in our generation, entertainment is the main business and focus of this world. It is a trillion dollars industry. We are living in a perilous times. The sad thing is that many of our professors of servants of Jesus Christ are also deceived by allowing their minds to be put to sleep through the world's entertainment. Notice what Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 1. In Philippians chapter 1, this is what Apostle Paul said in verse 29. He said, <clears throat> For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So Paul said that we are not to believe in Christ to live an easy life through amusement of the world. We want to thank the Lord that we are living in America and the freedom of speech and religion uh, we enjoy. In other countries, as Christians, uh, you, you can be persecuted and suffer. But, we, but praise God, we are in America. And yet, in America, we are living the comfort of the amusements of this world and profess to be workmen of God. Brethren, let us repent from this. Let us cry before the Lord and say, Father, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. My mind has been put, put, being put to sleep by the entertainment of this world. I, I want to serve you. I want to see souls get saved, you see. Brethren, as servants of the Lord, will you begin to study the word of God enthusiastically exploring its truths that our God may approve you as a workman? Hey. And this is what abundant life means, brethren. So we have learned first, study enthusiastically to explore truths to his word. Second, study curiously to explore history to his word. Second, Study curiously to explore history to his word. Now we sing the song, make me a servant, right? But how does the Lord make us servants? Well, the answer is by studying, isn't it? It is by amassing truths, wisdom, and knowledge of history, not the babblings from this world. Are you exploring history through the context of the word of God? See, without the word of God, history is history. It means nothing at all. When God is not part of history, history is nothing, you see. It's history, it's gone. That is why we look at the history through God's eyes and through his word. You see, the book of Daniel tells us briefly the history of the world from his time until the end of the world system when Jesus is reigning for 1,000 years. He tells us the empires that will dominate the world until the end of the Gentile era. And he started from Babylon, then Persia, then Greece, then Rome. And these four empires evolved through wars. Yes, we can learn history through the word of God. In fact, prophet Isaiah tells us how these empires came into the world's scene. He tells us that God himself raised these empires for his purpose. And today, the internet is a blessing to the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ because much of the information we want to know for our study is found there, you see. However, for many servants of the Lord, the use of the internet is a cursing to them because their minds are being put to sleep with its different kinds of amusements. Yes, brethren, the devil is also using the internet to unleash his deception and lies. He uses the internet to trap ignorant souls to capture their minds and, and freezes them until they die. But we are also guilty of using the internet wrongly, isn't it? We have used the internet for the flesh. 
instead of using it for our souls to study and to grow in knowledge, we are using it erroneously. We need to ask the Lord to forgive us and correct the way we use the internet. We use it wrongly to cause our mind to get amused and to be put to sleep. You know, Paul calls it to be blind-minded by the devil. He blinds our minds with worldly entertainment that we have learned from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. You know, the producers of the entertainment in this world uh, uh, uses such as videos, movies, etc., are creating these entertainments to make money. However, the devil is using them to put the minds of sinners and Christians to sleep. Brethren, can I encourage you to live an abundant life by curiously studying history? For example, you can learn how how Islam conquered many countries of the world. You can use the internet, you know, with discernment, such as the History Channel, YouTube, and other websites that can aid your, aid your study and see history through the word of God. But you need to be aware of amusement. See, when you open your, when you open YouTube, they have a lot of, uh, what do you call it? The popping up videos to get your attention so you can look at it. What do you call that? Advertising? Huh? Advertising? Yeah, advertisement or, yeah, and then they show you that you need, you want to watch that. They make it so exciting and they take your mind from what you are looking for and then you go there and pretty soon you spend 30 minutes, 45 minutes, wasted your time, right? <clears throat> Brethren, <laughs> When you are curiously studying history through the word of God, it's living an abundant life. But when we are being put to sleep by the entertainment industry, we are living a defeated life. Let me ask you to open 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. <clears throat> this is what Paul said. <clears throat> Notice in verse 11, he said over here, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. Hmm? Paul says that many Christians are busy bodies with the affairs and business of others. See, when you're busy bodies for other affairs, you are busy bodies for others, not for the Lord, you see. <clears throat> Especially the world. See, we are minding the sinful entertainment business of the world instead of being busy in the business of the Lord in saving souls. Do you get that, brethren? We are minding. We are, you know, listening to them who, who won the football or the basketball or whatever it is. Instead of focusing on what we need to learn to serve our king. We're minding, we are busy bodies for the things of this world. So brethren, this is called being busy bodies as Christians. We need to stop being busy bodies with the sinful business of this world. Can I exhort you brethren to be in your study, curiously to explore history through the word of God today? So we have learned first study, enthusiastically to explore truth to his word. And second, study curiously to explore history through his word. And third, study eagerly to explore creation through his word. You know, Solomon, many of the creations of God, he eagerly and wrote many of them. Do you know that the Bible tells us the earth is round? The Egyptians and Mesopotamians thought the earth is flat. And there are also who belong to this pseudo-scientific belief that teaches the earth is flat. Let me give you some of their names. English writer Samuel Robotham in 1849. Lady Elizabeth Blount established the universal synthetic Society in 1893, which published journals. Other notable 
authors in the 19th and early 20th centuries include William Carpenter, E. W. Bollinger, John Jasper, Paul Kruger, Wilbur Glenn Voliva, and in 1956, Samuel Shenton. You see, these people taught the earth is flat. And yet the Lord God tells us in his word that the earth is round. L let me show you a reference in Isaiah chapter 40. In Isaiah chapter 40, it tells us, all right? Isaiah chapter 40, in verse 22, this is what it says. It is he that seated, right? Upon the circle of the earth. Ah, you see. You're talking about God, right? And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch out the heavens as a curtain and spread them out, of, out as a tent to dwell in, you see. You see, brethren, the wise of this world, and the other hand, deified science. The world worships science more than God. They say that their science theory of evolution created us, that we appear in this world through the works of the science of evolution. But worshiping science, they rejected the creator of the universe. You know, they even called nature mother nature. Right? Notice what God says about their insanity in 1 Timothy 6.20. 1 Timothy 6.20. <clears throat> In 1 Timothy chapter 6, <clears throat> in verse 20, it says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. You see, we are exhorted to avoid profane or empty words. Profane means empty words. Avoid vain babblings and oppose those that they call science, you see. The world through science reject God and his word. Our university professors and gurus are teaching Americans that they came from the Big Bang. And they tell the age of the earth, some of them, is, they say it is 50 million years. Others, they say it's 50 billion years of age. Yet our ge geologists only find 6,000 years of evidences who live, uh, evidence of, of many people who lived on this earth 6,000 years ago. They only found the oldest pieces of evidence from Egyptian and Sumerians who existed 6,000 years ago. But there's another ridiculous saying in this world. They call nature what? Mother nature. Is this mother as a husband called father and the children are called nature? No, brethren. We call all these things in the world as creations of God. He created them for our blessings and discoveries. He created them so he can keep us busy in discovering them. He hides the gold and silver under the ground. He hides oil and gas under the air so we can adventure them and give them names. John, in John 1, 3, Jesus made all things that we see in creation. And David says that created, that God created the world through his word, right? Uh, according to Psalm 73, 6, see, they are created by his word through his breath. However, by pride, Man ignored these truths and chose to be ignorant. This is what Peter says. All right, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3 5. 2 Peter 3 5. Peter said, <clears throat> For this, they willingly ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. 
you see. <clears throat> you know, I love the, the song entitled, This is my father's world, right? You know, this is not owned by mother nature. Our father in heaven owns this world and the cattle of a thousand years. Our God created all things in this world so we, dis so we could discover them. Glorify God and find their lessons from us, uh, for us. You see, <clears throat> notice what Solomon discovered in Proverbs chapter 6. Let's see what Solomon discovered. See, when the servants of God are busy studying, they discover many things. In Proverbs chapter 6, <clears throat> it says over here, let me open my Bible. In Proverbs chapter 6, we find this. In verse 6, Proverbs 6, 6, it says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Look at that. See, Solomon was studying creations of God, how they move and how they act and get, a le uh, get lessons from him, right? He says that lazy people can learn from ants. You know, when ants uh, <clears throat> look for food, they have no guides or leader. They just look for food everywhere, you see. <clears throat> but in Proverbs 30, look at another one. Verse 25, this is what also Solomon said. About ants, right? 25, Proverbs 30, 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. You see, brethren, I mean, uh, Solomon was discovering the creations of God. <clears throat> now, he also uh, described what he discovered concerning other animals. Let's look at in verse 26 of the same chapter of Proverbs 30. It says, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. The spider take it hold with their hands and is in king's palaces. <laughs> right? See that? <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> You see, uh, Solomon was busy studying. But do we notice the bees? You know, the bees, they provide us natural sweetener called honey, right? You know, there's orange honey, avocado honey, and mango honey. It, be, it is because whatever flower the bees are collecting honey, the taste of that honey will be like, be the, like the flowers they get from. <clears throat> I notice what David discovered about honey. Let's look at Psalms chapter 19. You see, brethren, <clears throat> we need to study, isn't it? Verse 7, it says over here, <clears throat> uh, 19 verse 7 to 10. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and during forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. But notice in verse 10, most to be desired are they than gold. Yeah than much gold, and then sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Look at that. David used this creation of God as illustration. 
do you know, brethren, those little birds are flying in our yards? They are called sparrows. Why? They are, they are the cheapest birds. That, their name is sparrows, but they are the cheapest birds. Yet our heavenly father cares for them. And our Lord said, fear ye not, therefore you are more value than many sparrows. Matthew 10, 31, you see. So we study creation through the eyes of the world. And brethren, so that we can praise our creator and to get the lessons they can give us. Peter said that the devil is like a roaring lion. And the Lord said to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, you see. Matthew 10, 16, you see. In America, if you are fearful, they call you a chicken, is that right? I heard a saying from the Philippines which says, even though a monkey is wise, he can still be full, right? I mean, how do you say that in Tagalog? <laughs> the problem with the ungodly is they use their discoveries of stars and made them guide their lives. You know, they call them horoscopes, right? So brethren, what is your horoscope saying to you today? Is your horoscopes, your horoscope tells you to start studying through the word, through his word, then your horoscope is right. <laughs> so brethren, if we study the creation of God through the eye of his word or through the context of his word, we will not have enough time to waste on the entertainment of this world. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Notice what it says in verse 16. The Lord says over here, redeeming the time because what? The days are evil. The more you get old, the days becomes more evil, more dangerous, you see. So you need to redeem the time. You know, I like what Brother Sani just said a while ago. He said that he's, he's fighting life. He, he wants to do a lot of things for God before he, he leaves this world, you see. <clears throat> so brothers and sisters, will you study eagerly to explore creation through his word? That is living an abundant life. So we have learned, study enthusiastically to explore truth through his word. Second, study curiously to explore history through his word. Third, study eagerly to explore creation through his word. And fourth, study diligently to explore wisdom through his word. Brethren, you need to admit that we need wisdom. It, you know, in almost area of our life. First of all, we need wisdom for our salvation. Make sure you're safe, right? We need wisdom to keep our emotions healthy. That is free from headaches, sinuses, and migraine, right? We need the wisdom to keep our body healthy so we can continue serving the Lord. We need the wisdom to keep our joy continuously. We need the wisdom to live by faith. You see, we need the wisdom to learn how to move mountains of doubts and get our prayers answered by the Lord. Do you know that the wisdom and knowledge of our Heavenly Father are infinite? Just like a child who learns from his father. We are little children of God, learning his wisdom and knowledge. And that is that takes infinite, infinity, you see. Therefore, brethren, our life as workmen of God is a lifetime of study. You know the spiritual men and women of God study for life? They write all kinds of books and commentaries of the word of God. They continue to dig in the word of God and write all the information they get from it. I mean, this is what I say to you, brethren, so that our adventures and discoveries will be a lifetime. Do you know, brethren, in eternity, 
our adventures are to discover new things endlessly. Are you aware, brethren, that the earth, we are in it is just a tiny speckle in the Milky Way galaxies? And do you know that there are trillions of galaxies in the universe? I mean, just to discover everything on this tiny earth, we need more than a lifetime. You understand? You see, the Lord introduced to us in his word that there will be new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. It, it is all about new things and new discoveries. The problem, brethren, is instead of you discovering, you, your mind is being put to sleep by the entertainment world. Because you're wasting it, watching all the videos they make. You don't have a business to watch what they make, brethren. It's nothing to do with your godliness and serves the Lord. Now, let us, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. What do you think would in would be in this new three new entities, the new creation. I mean, on this earth alone, on this old earth alone, we need more than a lifetime to discover everything that God has created in it. In fact, we need million years just to grasp the trillions of planets in the Milky Way galaxy. Just imagine with the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem to explore in the future will take us more than infinity. But you need to get excited in discovering things. Because if you're not excited in discovering things, Satan will put your mind to sleep. Get excited in studying. I learned this, oh, this one, and this one. It's exciting to learn. That's why God uh, <clears throat> is infinite. And his creation is infinite, you see? So that we will need eternity to discover it. And in fact, after one trillion years, if we discover a tiny portion, it can make more, you see. Let's look at what Paul said in Romans 11, 13. In, in Romans eleven thirteen, 13, this is what Paul said. I'm sorry, 11.33. He said, Romans 11.33, all the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. You cannot find them. They're infinite, you see. So in other words, my brethren, if you truly want to serve the Lord and be, become effective and live the abundant life, you need to study. And if you study, you don't have time for the amusements of this world. I mean, you cannot afford that the amusement or entertainments of this world put your mind to a sleep and, and blind your minds day after day and eat your godliness and remain useless. I mean, just the wisdom we need for ourselves alone will take us beyond our lifetime to discover. Yet we also need wisdom on how to rescue souls from the pangs of hell and torment. Do you know that in your profession and career in this world, you continue to study? In America, you are required to continue studying in some particular fields such as insurance agents, real estate agents, medicine doctors continue their study, lawyers continue their study, specialists continue their study, medical quarters continue their studies, you know, likewise as workmen of God, our study continues and we need to get excited when we discover new things. Amen. Can I encourage you, my brethren, to study diligently, explore wisdom through God's word? And that is living in abundant life. Let me conclude this message, brethren. I just mentioned a few of the areas we need to study as workmen of our God. 
But I pray that these few things are enough to change your life, to become an approved workman of our Savior, to begin and continue to study through his word, which can cause you to live an abundant living. So let me summarize, brethren. Study enthusiastically to explore truths through his word. Study curiously to explore history through his word. Study eagerly to explore creation through his word. And study diligently to explore wisdom through his word. Will you do it, my brethren? Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to hear this message. Oh, we need this message, Father. Because the system of this world, the God of this world, the devil is putting our mind to sleep, Father. That's why we are not being productive in our service to you. We are sorry, oh, Father. I, I pray that we can learn from this message and put it into practice so that you can begin to use us to see souls get saved, to live the abundant life. Thank you, Father, for this message. I pray that you will bless it for our hearts, for our life, for our service. Dismiss us with your grace and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen. brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, for Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome, brethren. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let's use our time for the Lord. Amen.